Before discussing the exponential objects in a category of presheaves, we need to review the Yoneda embedding and see what a representable container looks like in each of our six example categories. So recall that given a small category C, a C object little c, and a presheaf x, there is a natural isomorphism from the set of morphisms from the representable presheaf of little c to x and the set of little c figures in x. This is called the Yoneda lemma. This functor y, which assigns each c object, its representable container is full and faithful. This is called the Yoneda embedding. In other words, there is a copy of the category C in the category of presheaves on C. Note that the Yoneda lemma will allow us to construct the representable containers since A figures in a representable container B corresponds to morphisms from A to B in the category C. So in the category of sets, there is only one representable given by a point. In set squared, there are two representables given by a container with one point in the first compartment and none in the second, and a second representable with no figures in the first compartment and one in the second. In the category of evolving sets, since the number of morphisms in the category E is equinumerous to the set of natural numbers, there are this many figures in the representable. The actions above show that the process is the sequential process taking us from n to n plus 1. For the category of bouquets, since there are two objects in B, there are two representables. The representable of V has one vertex V1 corresponding to the identity morphism on V, and no petals since there are no morphisms from L to V in the category B. The representable of L has one vertex corresponding to the morphism L in B, and one petal corresponding to the identity morphism of L. The morphism YL of presheaves from YV to YL is then the morphism which takes the vertex V1 to VL. In the category of graphs, there are two representables corresponding to the objects V and A. In the representable of V, we have one vertex V1 corresponding to the identity and no arcs or arrows since there are no morphisms from a to V in G. The representable of A has two vertices, V, S, and V, T, corresponding to the morphisms S and T from V to A in the category G, and one arc, A1, corresponding to the identity morphism on A. The source and target boundaries of A1 are V, S, and V, T, respectively. The G morphisms, S and T, give us morphisms Y, S, and Y, T from the representable on V from Y, V to Y, A which map the vertex V1 to Vs and Vt, respectively. In the category of reflexive graphs, there are two representables as well. The representable on V has one vertex corresponding to the identity morphism on V, and one arc, AL, necessarily a distinguished loop, corresponding to the morphism I from A to V in RG. The representable on A has two vertices, Vs and Vt, corresponding to the morphisms S and T from V to A in the category RG, and three arcs, A1, A sigma, and A tau, corresponding to the identity morphism sigma and tau from A to A in RG. By applying the right actions, we see that A1 has source target boundaries at Vs and Vt, A sigma has source target boundaries at Vs, and A tau has source target boundaries at Vt. Since Si is equal to sigma and Ti is equal to tau in Rg, then A sigma and A tau are moreover distinguished loops. The morphisms St in Rg gives us morphisms Ys, Yt between the representable containers which map Al to A sigma and Al to A tau, respectively. The Rg morphism I gives us the morphism Yi, which sends each arc in Ya to the only arc Al in Yv. The morphisms sigma and tau give rise to endomorphisms Y sigma and Y tau on Ya, which send all arcs to A sigma, respectively A tau. Notice that in each case, the small category is mirrored in a subcategory of presheaves. This is the realization of the Yoneda embedding that you can see firsthand. This is also why a representable is also called a generic container for an object in the small category.